So I've got my ends there. This is going to be the seat, the top. I need to cut it to length, minus that. This phone's really quiet when I was editing that last film. I had to turn the volume up a lot, so we'll see. Well, I guess the vacuum was working. So this board, it's full of knots, but it's fairly clean. And it's got quite a clean front edge. So this is going to be the top. I've already cut the bottom there that's going to go in that one. This one's going to go in there. Let it project by 20 mil. So that's cut approximately to size now. I'll rip it down, rip the back down, and then I can rip it parallel. See, I've still got the Freud, Freud Pro Blade in it. 40, 40 odd teeth. It cut that quite nicely, quite comfortably. Very clean cut. So I'll square this up, cut it to length, and I can think about cutting, fitting it into the grooves. Tiny still gaps there. But these boards are going to shrink a bit anyway. We'll do that end now. So I've still got the bottom one to do. 
sharp plane. It doesn't take much to set that little bit off. Right. I need to lose a little bit on here. Up to there. Ish. Right, I need to take this little corner off here. It needs to be nice and straight and clean across the front. So I'm going to make myself a little template, a little jig, and use my flush trim cutter and cut that out. I could just cut it with a saw, but I have machines to do that. Right, I really don't want to put screws through the ends. Might see if I can spike some up there. But I don't have clamps this long, so I might end up having to do that. So I've got some floor clamps on it just to hold it together for now. And I've got some marks. That's going to be 14 inch square there. I've got a centre mark. It's going to be shelf and dividers. So now I can take some measurements and start cutting these pieces. So I've got my boards laid on here. Centre mark. This is 14 inch from there. So between there and the same on the other side, I can cut a board that's roughly the size of that centre shelf. So I've got a long board there. I've got a long board there, so I'll rip it off to give that centre shelf and it'll give me some off cuts. They're the ends so that I've just put out of the way. So that's one piece for my shelves. Now I've got this off cut and a piece there. What I need to do is make two pieces this distance. That'll be the uprights on either end. Right, I could rip this to width, the same width as the you know the shelves and everything. But I find that once I've cut this, it's easier just to square the ends, cut it to like cut it to width and square the ends. So that's what I've got at the moment. You see they're oversized. What I find is when I rip things, you know, like I say, I could have ripped that board down so that it was that width, but then that might not be out, might not be square. So what I find now is better to cut them like that, then I can square this end up and cut them to length. But I want me me sliding table on here to do that because that cuts very squarely. So just for now, I've got my measurements, I can cut that shelf and then I need two dividers and I know they're the height of that minus the shelf and the height again. So I'll go do that and I can move this all out of the way, get me slidey table on, square these up and then put it all back like this. Right, so that's what I've got for so far. I ripped down the shelf because I could square this over a little bit easier. But now, cut all these others to the right length. Well, to the same length as that. 
minus this is just an off cut this is tongue and groove board that's going on the back it's quite thick as this stuff 20 mil almost there's some of that going all the way around the back so yeah I'll get these cut to length and squared off then you can see there's a little gap there touching at the back there's a little gap at the back and then underneath it's pretty flat so what I might need to do is just run me plane over this bit here just get those flat these aren't too bad that one's not too bad so I think it's just the centre of this board Ooh, steady and then all these are going to be connected with biscuits I might stick a screw in here and there so I've labelled everything under there and there put as many marks as I can on right this is that shelf that was sat on top of there that's that one it doesn't sit very well see it rocks a little bit so I'm going to plane a bit out the middle of here I don't know if I can show you on this See, just in the middle there, when I, when I sharpen the blade, I sharpen it at a slight curve, you know, it's slightly curved, so, oops, see the centre's just sticking up, but these two sides aren't, these two edges aren't, so what it'll do, when I plane, it'll take some out, but it won't leave two score marks down either side. And that's how you set your plane when you, you know, you look through it with a light background, and you can see. So when I'm planing across here. You don't want to go straight across because you'll just rag the grain, even with a sharp blade, you won't do very well. So you have to plane at an angle like that and then it's it's shearing the wood off. I'll show you. An old plane, there's a lot of play in the bit here. I'll just take the slivers off. created now is a hollow between there and there. I created a hollow so my plane won't touch so I have to take some off the side here to be able to get into that bit there.
put the light on. Oh, that's completely down now. I sharpened my plane by hand. Don't use any fancy gadgets because then, as I'm playing, as I'm sharpening it, I can rock it slightly so that it's slightly dished. So I want to cut the biscuits for these these ends that are going to stand up. I need a line across here and across there. So rather than square this, I've decided to use this. I did cut this square, but in case it is slightly out, at least these, you know, join up. So I've got a centre mark. And that's pretty much where it should be. Same there. I'll draw a pencil line up there. Draw a pencil line down there. I did the same on this one, flipped it over, I've got my pencil lines there, and then if I shove that out of the way, I've got F there, so that one's going to be going like that. I like to try and do these, you know, face to face like that, so in theory, that around like that and it's going to be stood up there but I want to go that way what I'll do line that up to that line clamp it down run the biscuit jointer in there and then straight down there then that board should stand up and I'll flick it around just the way I did it just then and do that one I'll have to do that one from that way, so it stands up like that. Same on that end with that one. These ones, I'll work it out, but I'll probably just clamp this board down, go in the end, and then mark, make a mark on the other side of here. So that'll be on there. So I'll get the right one of these, whichever one it is. Put that on there. make some biscuit marks down like that and then this is, is representing the shelf there so that will stand up like that need some thinking so I'm going to do this so I use my little rod 70mm in, 70mm in and then one in the middle And even though they're even, I'll work from the face side. This thing's got holes so that you can you can put a board on and then these would be more like near the middle but doesn't matter. So that's my line. Like that. You can just see my pencil line there. Very slightly out, millimetre, don't mind, it's close. It's so like I say, lean it down, spin it around, and do that one. Or, lay it down, spin it around, and do that one. A 
I'll do that one next. Then I can move these to get to that one. So that says A on there. Lay it down. Spin it around. Line it up. Right, so these two ends are done. That one's going there, CC, going with A. So what I'm going to do is put that one there, draw a line across, and I'm going to do a similar thing. Get out of the way. With this one. So I want to go that side of it. I'm going to do a similar thing to what I did there, but on that, I'll just have to lay it down like that. I just have to make sure that I get that's up. So I need to get that the right way around, <laughs> this way or that way up. But I'll just clamp it to a board and go in the end there. Same with that one. Probably just clamp this piece to that line and go down into it. So I like that. Don't need to do this one yet because I'm just using that one as a straight edge. So that's one of those done. I'll do the same to this one. So, like that. Because my line's at the bottom, imagine that shelf. If I was to lay that down and cut into the ends of it, and then it stand up. So, same on that one, like that. So, the shelf wants to be the way it is. I'll just move it over onto here, clamp onto this board, and then go into the end of it. So, like that. Mm -hmm. So like that. What's important when you're doing these that there isn't a gap there, otherwise you cut will be wrong as you run it in. It could be anywhere like that. But now I need to do the divisions in the uprights. So I'll be working to my centre mark, which is there. And... Cut. Oh, it's over there, because I've turned it all around. So now all I've got to do is the divisions, these little ones that are going up, up here. So that's my centre mark. Just write it on so that I know what I'm doing. X of the line. And I use one of the shelves just to find the centre. See there? So that was that. I need to take these apart and do the same thing and just make sure that I get it the right way around. So, same again. Will it laid out? I've got the other one laid out there. Still got to work down onto the onto the next level. But for this one, see I've got E and E, I've got the right ones. So what I can do now is flip that around there. Line that up to that line. Then they should should pair up. So those two are cut with that one. So what I'll do is I'll just flip that one over. I need to put my pencil lines on. And I'll do the same. So front edge, front edge, spin it around with that one. Fuck off.
Right, that's about right. Got my joints correct. Remembered to leave this 20mm over when I did that. And around the back here. Of course there's going to be end panels on in there. Where's my little bit of wood gone? It's up there. Back of board. Match board. Need to cut a rebate in here. So that I can sit in it. Same on the back here. So they'll fit in there. I ain't decided what's happening on the ends with these boards. I might just I might just bring this rebate around. Might have to do that when it's all put together. Anyway. So that's what I've got at the moment. I'm gonna cut the back now, or make the back, should I say? And then, once the back's in, I can cut these arms. I'm gonna make a template probably and use the router to cut those. Now I've just stood them panels, these timbers in place. I'm gonna put the joints together with dominoes. Like I said they just stood in place wanted to see how it looked to see if I needed to rip these down but I think I'm going to leave them the match boards only going to be like little pieces I think it'll be alright I put three in I forgot to change the cutter I got it out normally I'd go about a third so 30mm timber I'd normally go 10mm but these got 12mm they look alright, they'll do. So I'm going to put three in each one. And this is a bit close to the edge but I'm not bothered because I'm putting on a planted bead to take the, you know, to take the panel in.
gloves on again. Just got my hands clean. I forgot to put gloves on again. Bugger. Really foamy this glue. See it pissing out all over the place. I know you don't need much but I only put the same on as I normally do with that other stuff, wherever it is, that stuff, that lumberjack stuff. But it'll be alright, I'll leave that now to dry. And when it's dry, pin a bead on here. Need to shape the top a little bit, cut an angle on the back. I decided what angle that is, I'm going to stand that frame in and cut it. <laughs> 